So we might as well call to the meeting to order. Um, anything to add to the agenda? I think John mentioned you wanted to um, show some photos of purple loose stripe, and I always forget. I don't, do you have a water level report too tonight? Yes, I do. Okay. So we'll, we'll add those under new business, but anything else folks want to add? No. So we'll move on to the um, minutes from the last meeting. I, I had a, a couple minor things, um, more it's, you know, kind of for, for future people who might look at this and wonder who's kind of like on the board because um, Cheryl, you have public attendance, and in this case, you had Ray, but kind of technically, Judy and Holly are, are publics in these meetings. So, okay. yeah, make sure. You know, again, that's kind of trivial. So, but I thought they looked, the minutes look good. Any other, any other comments, thoughts? So, with that, um, move to, Approve the minutes. And all so in favor. moved. Second. Yeah. Okay. So all in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? No. So, okay. And it looks like we have no kind of public other than Judy. Do you have anything, Judy, other than Friends of Park Lake is public? No. no. Okay. So, um, Kind of, I was looking over the, the action item list and the um, future item list. So, so um, there's probably a couple things to update, but just wanted to get folks' thoughts here. Um, so the first thing we've had on the action item list is the five-year plan. And I don't think we've really kind of set up, if you will, a five-year plan. I mean, we have our annual report, which kind of outlines the general lake management plan. So... I'd recommend just removing it to make it kind of more more elegant looking, if nothing else. Um, so I, I have a couple things to kind of see if we want to drop. Um, the Phragmites problem, um, I, I let the folks with the SISMA know about it. it. It's mainly along the dike, and I don't know if it's on their schedule for treatment this year. I think it's generally treated in the fall, so I'll I'll try to find some time to check with them as to what's going on. Um, I saw recently, though, there's been been some changes in staffing, so you know you kind of never know. Um, the coliform bacteria testing, I added that to some old business, so we'll we'll kind of go in more depth on that. Um, we have the waterless boat cleaning station as an action item, but I think, again, I'd suggest we can drop that. That's kind of completed now, um, and I'm sure Ju Ju uh, Judy will mention it in the Friends of Park Lake report. The um, lake monitoring is, is, I think we've been doing secchi, chlorophyll. I think I did chlorophyll in early. I better put that down for, for, um, for August. I'm going to be traveling some. Um, so I'll, I'll either do it or coordinate with Dawn. Um, and then the, the aquatic plants, because of my travel schedule, it's not going mm -hmm. to happen until later in August. So I'll probably look to see if we can find a volunteer or two to help around, around the 16th. I'm going to have a fairly narrow window this year to try to get it done. So um, I'll, I'll send that out, but that's the update on that. Um, the loose strife control, um, I think we have, we need to discuss needs for 2022. Um, it's not urgent this moment, but I think, you know, John had some photos, so that would be good. And then explore grants. So, so did anyone have anything else on the action items to kind of update us? Thoughts on dropping the five-year plan and the boat cleaning station from that, just to kind of make it a shorter list? Me. Seem good with folks? Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. we can take things up whenever. Um, so one thing that I think, you know, the, boat, the waterless boat cleaning stations in place, but um, talking with Karen and I think some with Joe, actually, you know, there are plans 
at the township level for renovating the parking lot and kind of the, the boat launch area. So whether that's kind of a future item or an emerging action item, I'll, I'd suggest I'll, I'll chat with Karen and see the timing on that because um, she mentioned she does want our board involved and I just don't know quite where the discussions are at. So, so that'll, that'll kind of lead us to, you know, in the future, potentially different boat cleaning options. Um, along the lines with the boat cleaning station, I, I have had a, a game camera set up and it's been taking images or really videos, I should say. Um, they, I went today and the batteries had died, so I missed some amount of time. And the bit of review, it, it fills up the SD card fairly quickly. Um, it's just minute long videos, but they add up. But the, the thing I've, I'd observed is there are people just driving through that parking lot constantly who aren't really stopping. I don't know where they're going, but there is a constant parade of cars going through that. That's, you know, like I said, it's kind of a mystery to me, but it takes in a video of everyone going by. So, so, so um, at some point I'm hoping taking the videos here actually fits in with the research project I have. So I should be able to get um, one of our students to process those videos and kind of they're designed to help us see really how many, what percent of people are using the water, um, the boat cleaning station. So that'll, we'll, we'll know more at the end of the season. Um, so with that, I think that's the review of the action item and future list. Any, get any comments there? Go, go ahead, Leon. The, the future one, I'm wondering if we should move that information, the, the first one up and actually try to get it going. Which one, I'm sure, sorry. The work with Friends of Power like this to do the oh. brochures and stuff like that. I mean, I, I think we need to start acting on that sometime in the near future. Okay, that might be a, a good winter. So, so um, can move that up. Um, can I put you as at least the, the initial responsible party? Sure. Sure. Uh, but I don't know anything, so you I know, will uh, ask it's more to help prod us along. Yep, that's fine. I mean, it, there, there actually are, um, you know, some amount of things already available through the DNR, but we, we should figure out what, what we want for um, sure. our lake. You know, there are, most of them highlight all the invasive stuff, but I think at some level, you know, helping people see the, you know, learning the, uh, the native plants here, learning a little bit, we, like any, um, brochure, we want to have a goal and objective for it, or it may be multiple brochures, but um, with the, the cleaning station, that's a kind of a natural place to have um, educational materials associated with that. So no, good, good thought, Leon. So, okay. So with that, we'll segue into Friends of Park Lake report. Thank you, Leon. <laughs> I'm probably muted, aren't I? Am I muted? No, nope, nope, you're good. Oh, okay. You're good. Thank you, Leon, for bringing that up because it really is something that we need help with, not only things that could be passed out at the boat launch, but also um, for the Friends of Park Lake website, it would be good to have a section on invasive species and native plants and the fish that, you know, the fish population that we have in the lake. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the, sum, the Friends of Park Lake is hosting a summer fun day rather than our summer solstice party. And it's going to be August 21st from three to seven at Wishwasher Park and on the lake. Um, Dan, you have brought students down there in the past to work on the water. And I have asked, I wasn't sure what your summer schedule was. So I've asked MSU Extension um, in Clinton County to bring their water people down and they've agreed to do that. So that kind of puts you off the hook. Good. I, mean, I was unavailable that that day and weekend. Um, right. And we're, right. We're minimal so on students right now. The MSU Extension Water Resource people will be. They did a really nice job with you last year, or a year before last. Um, but it 
it, just because Dan's not available, it would be great if any of the others of you are available. I know Mary's out of town that weekend as well, but um, we could use some assistance down at the lake. It's from three to seven. Um, and uh, again, on my list of things that that on the list of things is for you to help identify some educational materials that we might have available that day that were good for uh, people to use to learn about the lake. Um, and then uh, Friends of Park Lake, of course, one of their big concerns is the E. coli. But I was in on the board meeting as Joe was last Monday night and we seem to be making great improvements along that line. And then, as you know, we did install, have the town to work with the township and have the boat cleaning station installed um, about a month ago. Um, I wasn't happy with the tools. And so I asked for a different tool and they sent us a, a broom that people just brush the weeds off their boat with and uh, Dan attached that to the boat cleaning station. Um, so that's, that's where we're at. That's my report. Okay, thank you, Judy. And I'll I'll look again, and try to try to coordinate. Um, you know, certainly the the extension folks have brochures, but I'll also see what we have available through our department to hand out. Um, yeah, as I said, my my struggle timing. Uh, I'm going to be um, unavailable that day, but also in between quite a bit. So we'll do what we can. Um, good, but yeah, the the you want to give a give a, you know, um, kudos so may, out. May I ask, can I list the Park Lake Advisory Board as one of our partners in the Friends of Park Lake Summer Fun Day event? You'd sure. have to vote on that. We vote, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, okay. Unfortunately, I can't make it. I'm not gonna be in town there, so. Yeah. Um, no. But that's uh Okay. Dan, is there anything in our annual report that's a couple pages or things like that that we want to just maybe print out to hand out. I don't remember what's in there. That, and if, if, if that's the case, if you just identify it and then send me the report in a copy, I can print stuff out and then make copies. Okay. If there's something viable. Yeah, there's, we have an executive summary and that might be <clears throat> helpful, but we might annotate that both. So it points to the full report, but you know, um, maybe take but, the cover image, you know, we'll. All right, but I was thinking, I was thinking about an appendix or something like that. Is there anything about the types of fish or whatever that we have in there or? Yeah, there's there's um, <laughs> 20 pages of appendices, but. Right, know, we, so that's that's what I was thinking about. You know, we could cut, if, if you think one of those, pen, I could cut, cut it down or whatever, but. Um, okay. Just look it over, because I don't have a copy of it. Right. I'll send you a copy, but uh, we, it would be good to chat through what might be most sure. beneficial. Okay. Okay. Nope. I'll I'll try to do that here within the next couple of days. Good. Yeah. There again. There's a lot of information. It's again kind of packaging, collating it, and right. prioritizing it. So good. Um, I'm, I'm going to circle back. Um, Judy asked whether the the Park Lake Advisory Board whether we could be kind of a I guess a sponsor, supporter. I guess a supporter would be a most appropriate terminology. And um, so I'll, I'll, I don't see any reason not to, but I'd put it to a vote um, first. Any, I, I'll take. I, I guess I'll move that we we list have ourselves listed as a supporter of the Friends of Park Lake Summer Fun Day. Um, second. Leon, second it. Any discussion on that? Okay, with that, um, no discussion. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? No. We'll Thank have, you. We will have, we'll have representatives there, though, from our... our well, I'm going to be there. Okay. Yep. That, that would be important. So. We, ought to, we ought to have a big t-shirt printed for you, Leon. <laughs> All right. We, we, with the lake monitoring program I worked with long ago, we did, we had t-shirt with a Secchi disc on it. That was quite, quite amusing. <laughs> it, was, it was a good one. So, okay. So moving on, um, Joe, just, I think if it'd be great if you could update us with some of the township stuff of relevance to our board. Okay. 
Um, as I mentioned at one of our earlier meetings, the township is looking at grants. So at the last board meeting, uh, we authorized a study to do for the broadband internet. And uh, along with that, we also authorized uh, going after a grant for uh, sidewalks for schools. So we're, we're looking at other funding. Uh, we also have done a grant uh, for the sidewalk in the Webster Road project. And that sidewalk's gonna run on the same side of the road as Somerset Apartments uh, from the township hall to the freeway. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we've, we've applied for that grant also. Uh, that's been tentatively approved already. So that leaves us with uh, one more major piece of sidewalk that we're looking at. And that's on the other side of the freeway down to uh, Hawks Ridge. Uh, that's all uh, MDOT property, but uh, that's what we're, we're looking at next. Um, we, had a, we had a discussion on the beach and as uh, it was discussed earlier, those numbers are looking a lot better. Uh, I, I can't, I would like to say we, we, it looks like we might open soon, but I really can't tell you when that's going to be. They're doing the testing and they're following the science, but it's, it's looking really good. Okay. Uh, we did sponsor the summer fun days. Uh, the township did. And uh, we also put the bids out about a week and a half ago to do the renovations on the property that we bought next to Wishwasher Park. So that's in process now. Uh, we haven't got any uh, bids back on that job yet, but uh, the, what, we're, what we're bidding out is getting rid of the house and the garage and the trees that we don't want, and leveling the land. And then after we get through that process, it looks like that's when we're gonna bring the other groups in to see what they wanna see. <laughs> How we're going to that. that looks like the, the line that we're going on. Um, and that's, that's about all I have. But I'll answer questions if I can. I got one. Yep. What, what is the plan or was that already in the budget for the extra money that's going to come township from the stimulus or whatever we want to call that, the federal thing? That's a great question. Um, the, the plan is to let the money arrive first before we spend it. Okay. Right. And so we're waiting for its arrival. Uh, the discussions will start at that point in time. Oh, because okay. I saw a figure in the paper about what it was going to be, but you haven't, yeah. they haven't let you know. I'll give you the, the number. Uh, the, the first projected one is a million three. And that's a good question. It comes in buckets, if you will. Okay. If you take the whole million three, in the first bucket, then you have to do an entire audit of the township's books in addition to the one that you're gonna pay for anyway. If you take half the money this year and half the money next year, you can audit it without doing a special audit. So there's a lot of uh, oh. uh, costs in doing it correctly, okay? Got it. So we're, we've decided to take it in two buckets. And people, it's just good to start this discussion. This money has is earmarked for certain things and certain things only that you can spend it on. And a general term that you can spend this stimulus money on is infrastructure, okay? And, and so, uh, you know, that's, that's the direction that we're, that we're going in. And, and right. we'll start the discussion when the money gets here. Right, so as I was wondering if that was gonna go towards some of these sidewalks you're talking about if you don't get the grants and stuff like that. That certainly is going to be part of the discussion. Okay. Okay. Th thanks. Because that's an allowable expense. Okay. Good, good, good question. Any, any yeah. other questions? Uh, okay. Hearing none. Well, thank you, Joe. That, that helps update us a lot on, on stuff. Um, you're welcome. So with, with, Old business, I think we've, we've covered to some extent the um, waterless cleaning station. So the main points I think are it's in place. Um, as Judy said, the initial tools were not quite what we envisioned. So there are some revised tools. Um, 
I, I've casually noted, uh, you know, kind of a lot of folks just drive right by it. Um, that, that's, you know, that, that's part of what happens with those, those type of cleaning stations. But um, I haven't sat there and watched enough to know what percentage of folks um, do that. And kind of sometimes signage helps. Sometimes it's just, um, you know, it takes time for people to really get in the habit. So I, I think give it some time. Um, but it, it's, you know, I think it's well located right now. It's, it's certainly, certainly visible. You know, I see people looking at it, but <laughs> whether people take the time, that's, that's the challenge. Um, but any, any other observations folks have made kind of casually or, or not so casually? No. Has, has, has everybody else been by it to even see it? I think most you have. Yeah, good. I've seen it. Yep. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, good. That's, you know, yeah, go ahead, Joe. You had your hand up. Uh, well, it's, it's an educational tool. It educates people when they drive by it. Okay. And I'd also like to say, thank the board members for all of you that got involved in educating the general public on not feeding the geese. I didn't mention that. It's on my notes. So I'd like to thank everybody that took the time to talk to the general public about not feeding the geese. It seems like there's a whole lot less of that going on now. And that's good for Yay. them. And it's good for us. Well, it had an impact. And, and you folks are part of that impact. No, no, that's been good. And I think the the cleaning stations, it, it takes longer. We've actually, for again, for our research team, which is focused kind of more statewide, we're, we're actually trying to develop some strategies in, in um, implementing with waiter cleaning stations for anglers, but you know how to how to draw people in. So we may use Park Lake as one of our test sites for for that. Just um, you know we, we've we've thought about different ways. Well, some of them crazy, some not. We'll see see what we test because it's always you know you don't know if it's going to work or fail till you try. So so okay. So so with that again, just you know. As always, if you all hear any feedback from the public or, you know, both positive and negative, it's good to, good to hear that. Um, the, I, I went out the one day, the, um, the um, uh, mobile boat washing station was there and it just happened. There, there were very few, um, very few boats that went out that day. It was actually one of the few days I've seen um, jet skis go out on the lake and one of them was somebody who was a mechanic just testing it and did two loops and was done. The other was folks I actually saw the night before that, that kind of choked their jet ski with weeds and came back to retrieve it the next day. And the, I don't know if we got photos, but their trailer and the jet ski had probably 20 pounds of vegetation attached to it. And they, they gladly took a boat cleaning or the, did the cleaning station, but that, you know, they, they otherwise wouldn't have truthfully, you know, that, that so it, we didn't hit a lot of people up, but we did, did have, and I think Joe stopped by that day and it's, you know, again, it's partly, you know, having folks, having it visible as part of the education. So, so that was good. Um, so with the, the beach closure, the E. coli, one thing, I don't know if y'all had a chance, um, I, we'll see if I can so Taylor, can you allow me to share my screen? Yes, I can, just a second. Sure. You should be able to now. So I, I just popped up again, if you hadn't had time, um, <coughs> this um, is the website. So the, um, the Eagle Department with the state has um, their I think they call it beach guard website um, it shows statewide beach um, closings just a lot of information so i clicked for park lake um, so the the numbers the trends you can see here are kind of early results that that triggered the closing we we're up in the three four five hundred level averaging roughly 400 went up to over 800, um, stayed at 500, 300, 300. Um, sorry, that's the 30-day mean. The daily mean went down to 120 once 
kind of we got things closed and kind of the township coordinate off. So I don't see results for this week. Um, I think they generally were out testing on Tuesdays, but for the 13th, you can see the numbers down in the 20s, which is, is no. no problem at all. No. Um, the the 30 day mean is still really high from all the earlier in the month. So, but the trend, you know, you see we're really coming down rapidly. So, um, you know, I, I think, um, one thing I'd suggest is again, folks on this board have helped educate people, but really I think we want to um, kind of express our thanks to the township for the multiple things they've done. Um, I think a lot of the public was unsure what the source was, which is legitimate questions. And we took the actions that were kind of immediate and seemed most obvious and they seem to be working. So I think the township really, you know, did did the right thing i think joe mentioned um when to open it up that's that's in consultation with the health department but certainly the numbers are down where where i think um you know certainly the water is reasonable for for full body contact at present so so you have to I wait guess. for a 30 day mean to drop down and it should it should drop down pretty soon i think the 30 day mean so yeah I would think so, and that I think that's where it's still starred. Again, that that kind of to me is a um, those type of rules. That if they're not really looking at trends, they're kind of missing missing some. It's overly conservative, perhaps, but that that's the state's you know way of looking at it. That's the way they look at it. Well, it's just to avoid opening up and then having to close it and then open. Oh, yeah. Right. Close right. Thing, so. I mean, there are times when it's highly sporadic, and that longer term average is good but again we're trending the right direction so, so. there was a, a lot of talk about um say that we have less geese than than normal but to tell you the truth this year so i'm on the other side of the lake and every year we see geese and their families but this year i saw none because i think they were all at the beach um and the time is the, yep. as soon as it was closed and they put that um storm fence up, I started seeing them. So I think that's what was, it seems like a, a cause and effect, but I know everything's correlation. So. Yeah. I, I think it's reasonable though. My, that would be my interpretation of what we saw. Cause we actually tonight, the geese were looking to come in our yard. Cause again, they were, I think they were artificially concentrated right at the beach, which is yeah. obviously the wrong place to have them. Um, as I think I mentioned before, the number of nests in the spring was exactly the same as it was the past two years. So kind of, it, it's, it was more a problem of location than total numbers. Um, so, so I think I, you know, mostly wanted to update that. I think as we have, um, potentially that should be an added future action item rather for next, you know, for this fall is to talk with, um, Kind of the township level you know making some suggestions to prevent this maybe we've you know had enough kind of educational efforts um i think the township at least in casual discussions has talked about having setting up an ordinance and whether that's the route to go or not um you know that that's you know that's something we should discuss i think the folks have noticed the, the kind of the loss of the beach and the, how critical and useful of an asset it is. So we, I think we do want to be pretty, pretty aggressive in making to the ex best extent possible that we prevent this from happening next year and open up the beach as soon as, as is um, the health department allows. So other thoughts, other comments? Signs that say don't feed the geese, <laughs> maybe, or something. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> there, there actually are signs that I think say don't feed animals broadly, but yeah. it, and it's, I, 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 through experience, both research and personal, signage is, is minimally effective. We had one of our public actually went over and looked at the signs because we had talked about the signs say no dogs looked at the signs specifically looking for that and didn't see it and it's on two separate signs just it, people it, it's just we we filter that out because it all becomes noise 
you know, in our research, we've had anglers interviewed at sites with signage that there was New Zealand mud snails, which are an invasive species in rivers. They were interviewed at a site with a sign and 50% of people were totally unaware. You know, and it's, again, I, I'd be unaware too. Often, you know, you kind of driving along and you suddenly realize what's the speed limit? I, you know, you know, you saw a sign, but you just see too much. So again, I think we need, you know, need to figure some stuff out. And in this case, I think it was a, a limited number of parties with the problem and addressing them individually seemed to be effective. So, all right. So going on to new business, I will stop sharing. I think um, we had two things. John has the water reports as well as some loose strife photos. So take it away, John. Hey. Am I sharing the water report or? Yes, you are. Yes. Yeah, I'm having trouble finding my. Uh... So you can see during that dry spell, it dropped quite a bit. We had that huge rainfall, of about, what, five inches. And then it dropped fairly rapidly down to the uh, soft logs. And now it's starting to drop gradually from it back. Okay. Sounds like somebody's got some construction in the back. I don't know. Unless that's John, maybe if you can mute, that would be that's good. That's not me. Didn't think so. I don't think we can mute. <laughs> this is shown showing the uh, normal rainfall. And you can see we're still short, but uh, we had that huge shortage, which it got made up. We had this really hot spell March through April. And here's the uh, purple loose strife. Yeah, it's really bad this year. It's there's a yeah. lot all along through the uh, marsh willow, whatever you call it. And I just noticed that in front of my neighbor's place, there's some right on the shore here. I'll have to take care of. But yeah, I, it's quite a maybe just because it's blooming now. But it looks, I think it's quite a bit worse than last year. And there's some down here that I didn't uh, quite capture. So no, I, I haven't been on the water for a couple of weeks here really. So no, it does look, um, it, it looks like, you know, there is more than last year. So I think, you know, what I'd suggest is we, you know, try again to see if we can get the weevils. Um, that seems to be really the, the primary method for controlling that at this time, given, you know, like your photos show, it's visible because of the blooms, but it's integrated in amongst other native plants and trying to, to kind of selectively control it other than biologically, I think, um, you know, pretty much impossible. So I think, you know, we'll, we can hope, I don't, I don't, <laughs> don't know if there's any other way for us to try to get the weevils or beetles, um, kind of raising them ourselves is probably out of our capacity. <laughs> um, so, so, but I think, um, you know, kind of with, with the photo evidence, which evidence is good, um, you know, we might, we'll bring that up again at the kind of timing um, that we have. It's not real expensive for the, for the township to do. Yeah, I, I noticed today when I changed the um, batteries and SD card at the boat launch, there's a, a modest amount down there too, so. Okay. Oh, hey, Dan, I was checking some websites just recently, and uh, I was wondering if you'd looked at Cornell University uh, for beetles. I hadn't, no. Um, the, the guy's name that's doing the work there is Bernd Blasi. 
Uh, can, can you can you email me the the info so I kind of get it down accurately? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I did I did get bills from him one year, but it seems to me there's nothing really on his website. I think I just emailed him. Okay. It's kind of working with different beetles for a different kind of a invasive species right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so chest, chestnut floats on the water. Yeah, I don't. I think, yeah, anyways, it's out east now and he's after that. So, oh, okay. Same deal getting beetles. Um, and I think they're related somehow. Oh, okay. What I saw about the website, it looks like there's uh, just four different varieties. Of beetles that they use. Oh, okay. And, and some of the beetles, you know, one variety only eats the flowers. There's one variety that only eats the roots. Oh. Another variety that only eats the plant. So, yeah, he's, he's done a lot of research on that. It's got a lot of good, good information. Good, good. Um, that would, that information, you know, would probably be useful to add into our um, kind of annual report as a, uh, you know, so future iterations of our board have the in information, you know, in front of them. That's, that's great. Good. Well, thank you for bringing that up, Don. Okay. So I think we are at the end where we are at public comments, but we have no public public. Um, so um, I think next meeting would be August 18. That we're hopeful, hopeful we'll be able to meet in person at that time so. um dan that yeah. both we both have like a, a retirement party right right yeah and i'm um yeah i, I kind of we might i might assess if people you know we got my, we got everybody here um does is a thursday night kind of like we did this month available for folks i'm i'm not uh, thursday night pardon I won't be there Thursday night. You won't be available Thursday. Um, potentially the, let me check my own calendar here, the Tuesday, right? The 17th. That would be fine. I'm not available that night, but go ahead without me. Well, yeah, I, like if you wanna go Thursday, go ahead. Well, or Monday the 16th, I mean, it just. Um, Monday, there is a board of trustees oh. meeting. Right. Okay. And then Tuesday, there is potentially a zoning board of appeals meeting if they do have an okay. agenda. Do they have what time is those? Are those meetings? Are they at six or seven? Or? Uh, they are at six. Um, zoning board of appeals is usually an hour if they only have, um, you know, one issue. Um, board of trustees meetings have been quite long as of late. We <laughs> we what about taking it? To the next week, the twenty Wednesday, yeah. the twenty fifth. Yeah. There is nothing that night, so you could do that if you wanted to. So I I could do the twenty fifth. Yes. At seven. Happen. And we we you know keep it at seven unless there's other. Yep, meetings. that'll work. Okay, so next meeting, the twenty fifth at seven p.m. So I'll I'll duly note that and send out an email so so we kind of have that written down good good yeah cheryl i was kind of looking at that and i was thinking i might you know do the party and then run over but yeah if we can party longer that's it's a, a, a long esteemed colleague of ours is having a retirement party and he's, we haven't been able to see him for a while so it'll be a, a good should be a good get together good so okay so, um, okay, with that, I think we are, are ready to adjourn. Great. All right. Bye, everybody. Yeah. Have a good night. Thanks. Have All a good right. one, folks. Bye.